What's up, guys? Welcome back to Storytime with Uncle Reddit. My name's John, and this is r slash Tales from Tech Support. So here we are in sunny Florida, and yet it looks like I've been sitting in a cave. Uh, <laughs> we're getting thunderstorms, and uh, it is sunny outside right now, but unfortunately, it feels like you're sitting in the bottom of a swimming pool if you sit outside right this second. So until I'm actually sitting in a swimming pool, I really don't want to go out there. So anyway, we're going to try to do our stories in here and see how the video turns out. Hopefully uh, this old laptop, hopefully I'll be able to get something edited with it. I don't know. We're going to find out though. All right, let's do some tech support. It's not a touchscreen. I've done various tech support jobs, but no story stands out more than this one. My first time getting any sort of tech support position is when I was working for an independent cell phone retailer for Walmart locations. One day a younger woman comes in, mid-30s, and she was buying a brand new iPhone that just came out a week or two before. This day our signature pad was down and we had our customer sign with the mouse and keyboard, typically by clicking and dragging the mouse. Simple, right? I flipped the monitor over towards them to have them sign and they put their finger on the screen and rubbing their finger all over saying it's not working, attempting to sign. I say, you need to use the mouse, and not even five seconds later, she picks up the mouse and puts it in the middle of the screen, dragging the mouse all over the monitor. <laughs> I was barely able to contain my laughter, and I had to spend the next few minutes walking her through how to click and drag a mouse. She then went and said, this stuff is so complicated for me, I have no idea how you guys do this. It blew my mind to this day. I had no idea how this person never learned how to use a mouse up until this point, and was buying a brand new iPhone. Oh, I know. It's because people that really didn't mess with computers of any type until they got iPhones and iPads, they're still not messing with computers. So all they know is that touch screen, the tactile stuff. Uh, when I talk to my kids about how we used to have to text by pressing the number keys, you know, so many times for certain letters and things like that, they just kind of get that little glossed over look on their face and yeah. So anyway, sorry, I keep looking over here because I'm making sure that I'm not too out of sync. I'm, I'm hoping I'll actually have video here. If not, you'll know because you'll just see a couple static pictures of uh, maybe Florida. I demand absolute compliance. Howdy, folks. For those of you that also work financial IT or, heck, any IT within a highly regulated industry, you have probably dealt with the dreaded compliance. In my position, I'm expected to hold people to it while also being able to flex it enough to help them out of a situation and to be in actual compliance. You know, wink and nod it away to keep them out of trouble because an honest mistake that I can easily correct? Usually no big issues unless folks get pushy or blatantly flout compliance rules and regulations and we have to crack down and turn them in for it. What I get is, recently, my boss hands me a ticket and asks me to fix it. In my position, I am the buck stops here desk. I fix it or it can't be done, for regulatory compliance, or we just refuse to support esoteric software and hardware nobody's heard of. I read through the ticket notes, bungled by level 1 and 2, of course. From the halfway point of the prior several days of notes and interactions, the user makes it very clear how important compliance is to them, and that we have to fix this issue now to keep the financial advisor they work for in compliance, or heads will roll. Why would heads roll? Because they have no access to required X years of client and financial data they're supposed to have access to. Fair enough. I've helped many others in that situation. Time to get them out of a pickle. I then read it a second time to see what the actual issue is. I can't trust users to tell the actual truth and can't trust the level 1 and 2 techs to have accurate notes or actually do their jobs. Mr. Financial Advisor is mad because major brand A cloud storage isn't working and all of his client information for several years was in there. Fun part is that major brand A has been blocked by both internal software security policy, access is blocked, and is listed out explicitly by name in the software policy as banned for the past several years, as it's not considered secure. So, Mr. Financial Advisor has been bypassing security for years. Big red flag. Normally not an issue. Again, I'm allowed to flex rules to help folks like Mr. Financial Advisor get out of situations like that and help them get into compliance. All I had to do was get the software to install, it had been failing to install, and yes, I have my methods, and help them get their client data moved to one of the three approved storage and backup solutions offered by the company. Then financial advisor's assistant, Miss Screechy, got involved. She was being obstructionist. She was nasty and treating agents below me like dirt. Then came the magical words from her in an email response to the ticket. This has to be in compliance now. No exceptions. I need a phone call now to resolve this issue. I demand absolute compliance. I grinned. I grinned savagely. 
I'd dealt with her type many times and already knew what was going to happen, so I had an internal giggle as the following happened. Miss Screechy had left a cell phone number to call. Not an issue. However, I knew my number showed up as potential spam on most major carriers, but showed up as financial company tech support on the company phone line. She refused to answer my call, obviously because it's potential spam. I left a voicemail and went to update the ticket. Before I could finish updating it, she responded to the ticket very rudely and telling me to make everything compliant now, or she was taking it to her compliance officer as a breach of contract and compliance. Up to this point, I was willing to work with Miss Screechy and her boss, Mr. Financial Advisor, to get their butts out of the fire. She insisted on getting on her hands and knees and rolling on the hot coals. I copied the relevant parts of the security and software policy into the ticket notes explaining in thorough detail how the software they had been using for years was named explicitly as not compliant and labeled as insecure cloud storage and insecure remote desktop access. I then also copied out the relevant part of the policy explaining what was allowed, three options that comply. I also made sure to commiserate and mind closing notes to Mrs. Screechy and Mr. Financial Advisor that while I truly sympathize with them and appreciate that they want to remain within compliance, because of the prior list of rules in the security policy, we would be unable to assist further, as I didn't want to breach security policy in my attempts to assist them, as installing said software was a breach of policy. Ticket resolved and referred to their compliance officer with all the relevant communications about how they had all of their sensitive client data in this insecure cloud storage and had been bypassing security for years to access it. Come yesterday, I get to grin when Miss Screechy and Mr. Financial Advisor leave a review on the ticket for how the level 1 and 2 agents and how the level 3 me did. Grumpy doesn't begin to cover it as they also had taken issue to executive escalations. Needless to say, I grinned and had a great laugh as the head of escalations is my coworker in the cubicle next to me. Coworker asked me about it. I gave all the details. They laughed and resolved out as non-compliance on part of advisor. All because of a little attitude and unwillingness to work with me to get them out of that very situation. I don't mind bending rules to help folks out of a sticky situation. I've done it many times before and I'll do it again. Just be nice and I'll bend over backwards to help you out because I enjoy helping others. But this is one where I got to enjoy being able to say, the buck stops here. Even if they weren't doing something out of compliance. Be nice. This is the guy that's going to help you fix your issues. That's not the guy and this isn't the time to start getting snarky and demanding and just overall bitchy. It's not, it's just a bad idea. I don't care even if you're totally 100% right. You still don't get bitchy with the guy that's going to pull you out of the hole. But... People are stupid. Classic email distribution list fail. I think I don't belong in this distribution list. First posting, so don't be too harsh. The characters of the story. 700 plus person size main building. 2,000 plus person in logistics. Around 100 persons in different IT divisions with 30 of us in the system integration. One colleague from our IT department, let's call him Dave. One apprentice from the logistics, let's call him Al. A normal day at work. Suddenly another colleague accidentally managed to use the corporate-wide distribution list sending an email to everyone. Accidents happen and the IT isn't free of all mistakes. So after sending this email and trying to call it back, which doesn't work because once you send to a distribution list, the mail goes to everyone on the list. Random people send a reply back to Dave. The best part wasn't that they replied to him directly. Every one of the replies we received went to the whole distribution list. And every single one wrote either one of these two replies. I think I don't belong in this distribution list, or I think I wasn't supposed to receive this. Gladly, we managed to calm everyone down and reduce the mail flood to just a couple of people answering, but this isn't the end of the story. A couple weeks pass when suddenly we receive an email. I don't belong in this distribution list. An apprentice from the logistics department came back from his school period and must have thought that he has to unsubscribe from the list. Another mail flood later, decisions were made to blacklist certain mail recipients for groups of people and we had to explain them that they indeed are all in this distribution list they work at said company. What's the moral of the story? Our IT department, quite unforgiving, to this date when someone from inside the IT department sends a mail to the wrong person, we all like to remind him that he chose the wrong distribution list, making this story to one of the more positive and amusing ones in our company. A couple of colleagues that left our company from the IT department ended their farewell mail with, now you can remove me from the distribution list. Blacklist or block company-wide distribution lists? And down below we have... We did something similar at my previous job for one of the biggest cities around. Think about 20,000 employees kind of city. An obscure employee sent an email to all employees about a colleague of her retiring. Some replied with genuine messages for the retiring guy. A lot of answered to all something like, Remove me from this list. And a lot of people just trolled it and sent funny answers. 
Everyone in the city laughed for a good week about it. Firemen, library clerks, engineers, administrative clerks, blue-collar tradesmen, and so on. Once in a while, even months after the fact, someone would even resend an email reply to get news about the retiring employee. It stopped when our domain name changed. This is a problem we used to have at the Board of Ed, working for a county agency essentially, but it's state funded, so it's really like working for the state. And uh, thank God, all of our distribution lists, anywhere in those emails, most of the time they were buttoned down tight, and we only, only certain people had access to certain lists. But every once in a while, somebody would do something magical, and their email would get sent out to everybody, everybody in the county. And uh, I'm not sure how they managed to do that, what they managed to type in there, but uh, somehow they got through, even with all the rules and everything that were in place for our emails. Some people just have this magical touch when it comes to uh, mucking things up. I don't know. When they want it completed yesterday, but you don't have a time machine. I'm looking into advancing my IT career. A friend makes me aware of a fairly lucrative position at a local manufacturing plant, which pays very well for my area, and is a huge step up from what I'm doing at a local college which has elements akin to help desk support, but is explicitly not an IT role. I've worked with the ticketing system and have over 15 years of personal tinkering with computing, so I think this helps me land the job, and I'm thrilled. There are two of us in support for over 500 users, so we provide level 1, 2, and 3 support. I really want to make a good impression, so I dive into resolving my first ever help desk tickets in my life, with help from my supervisor. My supervisor is exceptionally helpful, but can have a bit of a temper at times, although not towards his staff, but useless users. Day two swings around and I'm feeling positive. A new ticket comes in. A user called Jeff, name changed obviously. Jeff puts in a ticket saying the database is throwing up an error. I contact him through Teams chat, as most users use that instead of calling. Jeff, the database has an error. I need this to do my job and report crucial statistics. <laughs> I can't say that word. I'm exceptionally busy. It needs fixing now. Me. Okay, my supervisors inform me we can resolve this by reinstalling the application. It's a relatively quick fix, but you'll be unable to work for 20 minutes while we configure it on your laptop. Five minutes pass. Jeff. This is unacceptable. You said it would be fixed in 20 minutes. I'm wondering how five minutes now means 20, but okay. Me. Office is just reinstalling, which includes the database software. As you can see from the progress bar, it's about 33% done. Please bear with it as it completes. Jeff. No, this is unacceptable. Cancel the installation now so I can go back to work. I'll be making a complaint. At this point, I'm terrified. No one's treated me like this at my last job, and now someone's making a complaint on my second day in IT? Me, trying to be polite. I'll leave the ticket open and pending until we get the issue resolved for you. Before I can even walk down the corridor to explain to my supervisor, I hear him speaking with a raised voice on the phone. Supervisor, if the application is so crucial to your job, why won't you let my staff work on resolving it for you? Until you provide us with an hour of your time when we can work on your laptop, the ticket will be on hold. It's now your responsibility to book that time in your calendar for us to complete the work. It's now been three months and Jeff has requested that we take his laptop and install the software and configure the database overnight, requiring us to stay after hours. We're salaried 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., which was refused. After asking when the ticket will be resolved three times, to which we responded that it was his responsibility to find the time, as we had tried to accommodate him multiple times and we were told he's too busy, I raised it with my supervisor again. Now I know why he's appreciated. Supervisor says, Close the ticket, buddy. I guarantee you that when you close it, he'll call again. And then he'll be denied a final time. The guy's a D-head. I closed the ticket and he called instantly. He got told somewhat politely where to shove it, and next time if he has an urgent job that needs completing to be cooperative. I love having supportive superiors who tell users what's what when they're acting like idiots. Yeah, it is really nice when you can have a boss who is supportive and not just because he's sticking up for his own department, but because, you know, you truly should be supported. You know, I'm sure if it was something that was your fault, I'm pretty sure, like you said, he wouldn't just jump down your throat about it. But he would talk to you about it or make sure you're doing the right thing for the client. So it, it's nice to have somebody with a little bit of common sense working in your corner. That's nice. A dramatic shift in the bar for tech stupidity. I work in tech support. Me, IT support, this is my name. End user. Hi, I keep getting these annoying pop-ups on my screen every time I press the caps lock key. And when I press the caps lock again, it pops up again telling me I've turned off caps lock. This is really distracting. Me, does the message stay on your screen or does it go away? The end user says it disappears after a few seconds. Me, 
That's normal behavior. It's there to ensure that you realize it's on so you don't accidentally type a password in the wrong case and lock your account. End user. Oh, that's so annoying. When I'm typing an email, it's continuously coming up. It's so distracting. Oh no. Me, have you tried using the shift key instead? End user. The shift key? That one doesn't do anything. You press it and nothing happens. Me, you need to keep the shift key pressed and then press the letter you want to have in uppercase. Then you let go and continue to type lowercase. End user. Hmm, well that's weird. I don't know anyone who does it. I'll try it for a while, but it, but it seems terribly inconvenient. <sighs> I've not had to explain to anyone how to use the shift key before. That's a new low for me. This was not a stupid person. They just started their five-year PhD in cancer research. Well, like I've said a few times before, more than a few times probably, uh, I've noticed a lot of PhD and master's students tend to, uh, tend to be very specialized. Uh, which means they're very smart in their field, maybe even beyond their little focus of that field. You know, they, they know tons of stuff in that direction. But when it comes to everyday things like using the tools of your trade, sometimes, yeah. I mean, I've seen guys that are master carpenters. They can make the most wonderful furniture, but not one of them knows how to hold a hammer correctly. Uh, I don't know. It just blows my mind. But what are you going to do? All right, guys, thanks for sharing a little bit of your day with me today. Hopefully the next video will go smoothly. Uh, like I said, if this one ends up not being able to have usable video, I'll throw some pictures up and yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. All right, until the next one, we'll see you.